we are looking at uh, technology here in LA at the Milken Conference and artificial intelligence in finance and health. AI making waves in both fields, helping professionals get better data than ever before. IBM is helping businesses across 20 industries in 80 countries uh, using AI and putting their Watson machine to work. Joining me right now is the IBM Executive Vice President, Dr. John Kelly III, and it is great to see you, John. Thanks so much great for joining you, us. Maria. So tell me how IBM is using AI. Well, first of all, Maria, we're in the very early days of artificial intelligence. And, uh, you know, I've been in the tech industry for a long time. This is the biggest thing I've ever seen. Um, it is going to change every industry in very fundamental ways. Um, sort of think about all previous computing as being programmable computers. We'd have to write programs and the machines would basically do what they're told. With artificial intelligence, these systems now learn on their own. And you mentioned the key word, data. The data is so large now that we can no longer, as humans, sort of program to use the data. So artificial intelligence machines learn on their own and use this data. And think about every industry in the world, whether it's financial services or retail or healthcare, they're awash in data. And really what artificial intelligence is doing, and we're helping enterprises do, is mine that data for new insights. So again, across the world, every industry is really changing based on artificial intelligence. There's a lot of fear mongering going on about this subject that d because of these data sets inserted into a computer making the computer smarter, eventually the computer and the robots will be smarter than humans and it's going to replace jobs. And you say? Well, it's always man plus machine. We've seen this time and time again. The machine learns from the data and from the humans and we learn from the machines. And every time we put the two together, we get better results than just a human or a machine. So we don't believe that there's risk involved in this, particularly if we introduce these technologies in an ethical way. And of course, that's what we at IBM stand for. So tell me uh, if, if while you implement AI in a number of industries, how are people looking at this in an ethical way, a way to unleash this, um, that it is in fact a really great force for good? Well, let's take healthcare as an example, Maria. Um, healthcare, again, is awash in data. Uh, data in the healthcare industry is doubling every seven months. I mean, that's an astounding figure. And the doctors and the providers and the payers just can't keep up with that. So we've trained our AI system, Watson, to understand electronic medical records and to try to summarize those to help doctors. We've trained it in oncology to help doctors and patients understand what are some of the care and protocols that are available. So we go to places like Memorial Sloan Kettering, we train our artificial intelligence system, and then that goes on to help doctors. What are the easiest ways for someone out there who may not understand AI, obviously the way that you do, to, to see that, okay, that's AI, and, and they didn't even know that they've got artificial intelligence in their home? with like those home devices. And so give us a sense of what's an obvious AI product. So artificial intelligence can be used in consumer areas. So for instance, it can help you as you're shopping on the web to op optimize what you're looking for in a very intelligent way. If you're applying for insurance online or trying to pick a healthcare, healthcare plan, a tool like Watson can help you navigate what is a very complex area. And then when you're really in need of care, uh, as an example, we've developed a tool with Mayo Clinic whereby we basically take a patient with cancer and we look at the, uh, all of the protocols that are available for clinical trials and the system does a match in minutes versus humans doing it in hours. So at Mayo Clinic now, women with stage three or four breast cancer, we've doubled the number of women getting into clinical trials. Oh my that, goodness, that's, a game, that's so that's a game fantastic. Changer. So, so industries with a lot of data yes. will obviously be helped and become more productive. So that's like financial services and, and health care could be a lifesaver. That's right. And, and for the workforce, you know, I sort of view as, as everyone gets better at what they do with the aid of artificial intelligence. The, you know, the best docs in the world get even better with access to this. And on the other end, people who maybe not, can't qualify for a job with the assistance of an artificial intelligence system now can get a job. And, and, I, and I think most people don't realize that we've been here before, the, the outset of the internet, for example. There were a lot of jobs that no one even knew were coming, so there will be a whole host of new jobs coming as a result of AI. That's right, Maria. I mean, I like to remind people that in the early days of programmable computing systems in the 60s, the whole field of programming didn't even exist. Yeah. When we created those systems back then, we had to go to the universities and create programs and courses in programming, and now it's an enormous discipline. 
artificial intelligence will do the same thing in data. I love it. John, it's good to have you on the program. Good seeing you, Marie. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Dr. John Kelly joining us from IBM.